Thank you, band. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Hopefully well. Hope you had a good Christmas. And, um, again, thank you for, uh, for joining the classroom today with the desk. If you're visiting here or dropping in online for the first time, this is not my normal approach. This is not an ego thing. It's, a, uh, it's an ankle thing. So uh, I'm kind of uh, bound to sit at this point. And so uh, that's what I'm doing. And I appreciate the accommodations and the patience you have. I want to, uh, well, actually, uh, I want to start off, and maybe this will be a new emphasis for me. I'm not sure, but I want to start off by, by praying for those who need healing. As I know there's already been prayer, and we've already called out a prayer for a few specific things, but it seems like right now there is a lot going on, and uh, we're hearing every day about this person, this family. This, this, uh, COVID is spreading again. It's, it's crazy, and other sicknesses are, are prevalent right now, many. So if you yourself or somebody uh, very close to you needs uh, physical healing, I'm going to ask you just to stand. We're going to, make, we're going to pray a prayer of agreement, and you can stand for yourself or stand for them. But we're going to, to pray and believe. Pastor Todd's testimony was, uh, was accurate, and I appreciated it. Because uh, so many times we tend to just forget what God is actually capable of. And we overlook it, and we get so used to, well, if he wants to, he will. Well, you know, sometimes we have to invite him specifically, and we have to commit things to him specifically, and we do that, and even, even with that soul-to-soul connection we have with God, sometimes we don't say it with our lips, but our heart is crying out to him, and it carries the same weight, in my opinion. So let's pray and believe for healing and restoration for whatever it is you're standing for and whoever it is you're standing for today. So pray a prayer that that is uh, centered around, God, I know you can do this, and I receive this from you. I receive this. Heavenly Father, right now we look to you, and you are not only the author and finisher of our faith, the foundation and cornerstone of that, you are the great physician. By your stripes we are healed, not by our actions, not by our goodness, not by our merit, not by the amount of prayers that we stack up on one side of a scale. By your stripes we are healed. We are healed because of what you did for us, not because of what we can do for you. So right now we petition you and we claim that and we ask you to heal and restore. I pray for those who are watching online and listening from far distances away today who need healing, who need a miracle in their life. I pray for those who are local and are watching right now. I pray for those who are in the house right now and they're part of this assembly. God, I pray that you would heal, you would restore, you would raise up, and you would increase faith in the process. So we look to you and we claim, we receive We receive, we claim on basis of who you are, but we receive on that same basis. So we receive that healing this morning as we continue to put it before you and being thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to read, uh, it's not necessarily known as a Christmas passage but it actually is centered around Christmas. It's John chapter 1. John chapter 1, in the beginning, the gospel of John. John chapter 1, in the beginning, uh, the Word already existed. The Word is is who we know as Jesus, Y-H-W-H, Jesus, Yeshua. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him. So God, this is saying God created everything through the Son. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light. So the light of Christ was brought to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony, because of John's testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. 
He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to who all, but to all who believed and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a, with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. My dad has already always interpreted this. He pitched his tent among us to camp with us for a while. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about. When I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. From his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. We've seen, received the grace of Christ over the grace of the law. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus. No one has ever seen God, but the one unique, the unique one, his only unique son, who is God himself, is near the Father's heart, and he has revealed God to us. This is, uh, there's a lot there, and I would encourage you, if you take time to read or listen to Scripture, push John 1. Listen to John 1, and let that, let that soak into your heart. Let that be absorbed into the fabric of who you are. And that, it says so much, the, the Christmas story and the gospel story is all right there. It's all right there, and a lot of explanation of God and the reflection, the image of God, which is Jesus. And I know it's, uh, it's difficult to understand the different facets of that, but uh, it's, it's, so, it's so accurate. In my family, there have been four George Westlakes. My grandfather, who was the original, my dad, who was junior, myself, who was the third, my oldest son, who was the fourth. And um, there are four of us, and you'd say, well, I know George Westlake. Well, which one? And this, ha this has happened my whole life. Which, you're George Westlake? So the other one is your, your grandfather? Yes, it is. Yes, he is. Yes, that's my grandfather. Thank you for recognizing that. So, you could say, which George Westlake? Well, well, I've seen one. I know one, so therefore I know them all. Well, no, you do and you don't. You do and you don't. You see, I, it's really strange because my dad and I, though, you know, when I was, was young, I, I did like a lot of sons who have fathers in the home. I, I tried to copy him and mimic him, and he would do things, and I would do things, and tried to walk like him, clap like him, talk like him, couldn't do any of it. Tried to preach like him, couldn't do that. Tried, you know, all of it, couldn't do any of it. And I thought, man, I'm adopted. He gave me his name, and I'm adopted. Because we're built different. We don't have the same body type. Uh, we don't have the same brain type. Um, we're different. And then I met my grandfather. Because he wasn't around a lot. But I, re I met my grandfather, George Westlake, and I was like, oh my, I'm a copy of this guy. I'm this guy. I'm a lot different than my dad, but I'm my grandfather. I'm built more like him. I think more like him. I think my, my just everything about me is, more, is like, that's crazy. And now I have a son, and he's not one of the Georges, but people tell me all the time, oh, your son, and we tell my youngest son all the time, you are your grandfather. You're built like him, you stress like him, you have anxiety like him, you have no patience like him, you preach like him, and, but, but he's not a George. But you can say, okay, I've seen one of the Georges, I've seen, no, we're all different. We're all different. If you put all four of us together, my grandfather's passed on, but if you put all four of us together, you would say, okay, they're all different, but they're all the same. And that's kind of the way this, this God thing is with, with the Son, the Word, as he's referred to here, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, they're all the same, but they're different. Their personalities are different. Their types are different. What they do is different, but they are all the same. So you say, okay, what's this with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit? Some of you grew up saying that, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And, and you grew up with, with part of formality that included that, and it just never made sense. 
It's like three people with the same name and the same DNA, but they're all individuals and they all have their own personality and they all have their own functions. So when you read John 1, break it down in terms of somebody you know who has the same name, but they're very different. But they all kind of represent the same thing. So that's just a little, a little breakdown of that. A little breakdown of that. Uh, speaking of my, my, my oldest son, I had he, he and his wife ask them both to wrap a present for me. And here is one. It's very beautiful. It has layers. I'm not sure how this happened. I told her, I said, I'm not sure how you did that. But it has layers and intricate things. And there's this other one <laughs> that has layers. <laughs> But it's not intricate. Well, it kind of is, if you like puzzles. And I actually, I actually need somebody, and I, I'm kind of looking for that guy in the orange and blue, the little guy in the orange and blue right there in the fifth row. Um, he came up and gave in my gift to the king right there with your hood up. You're looking right at me. Can, would you come up here? Would you be so kind? And if not, you can send one of your family members there, but I'd like, love to have you up here. If you can come up one of these staircases and, or jump up, whatever skill you have. All right, take your time. <laughs> hey, cool, cool does not move fast. Here, come over here. I will, I will, I will not harm you, I don't think. So tell me, uh, tell me your first name. Rich. <coughs> Rich. Rich. Okay, Rich. Well, thanks for coming up here, Rich. I like your little polo jacket. That's cool. And uh, thank you for coming up here. Are you married? Okay. 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 Well, that's probably good at your age, but just thought I'd ask. I'm going to let you uh, pick one of these two gifts to open. And, uh, and you're actually going to open it, if you will, right here in front of everyone. You have to pick one of these two gifts. One of them has something a little better than the other one inside. So you have to ask yourself, is this a trick or not? I understand that. But I'm going I'm to let you pick one of these two gifts to open. If I say, okay, which, which one would you like to open? Which one do you pick? This one? Okay, Rich. Uh, open that any, any way you want. You don't have to spare any parts or anything. All right, that's good. That's good. You've been there before. Now, before you, before you finish opening that one, Let's, let's open this one, the one that's much better looking. Okay, this one has a bag of wrap snacks in it. Notorious B.I.G. Honey and jalapeno. Not a bad gig. Not a bad gig. I've had them. Okay, Rich, let's see what, what you got there. My, 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 you got a $100 bill. Okay, you could have had, rat. would you like to trade? Okay. Because <laughs> I will trade you if you want. All right, let's give Rich a hand. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you doing that. Okay, so he made the right decision. He made the right decision, even though this is not bad. If you've had these, they're good. But he got himself a little extra. And here's the moral of the story. See, Emmanuel 
God with us, came to the world in a less than stellar package. And that's one of the reasons people didn't accept it. Because uh, people down through history and still today, people are looking for their Messiah to come as a warrior, as a king, as a ruler, as a conqueror, as a leader. The Word became flesh in the most helpless form possible, a human baby. One of the most helpless forms among any species when it's born, if not the most helpless. So we don't always get what we wanted. He came, he came to a family in Nazareth. Uh, people said about Nazareth and about Jesus because of where he was from, can anything at all that's good come from Nazareth? You know, you may know somewhere like that. Can anything good come from that household? Can anything good come from that neighborhood? Can anything good come from that city? You know, one of my pet peeves is when people don't know anything about Kansas City, and they say, oh, yeah, you're from that little country cow town, Kansas City. It's like, you haven't been to Kansas City. Don't say that about my city. You can say that about western Kansas. <laughs> but don't say that about my city. Can anything good come from Nazareth? No, we don't think so. He came to a blue-collar family. He didn't come to a, to a, a ruling family, even though Joseph was a descendant of David. He didn't come from a, a lineage of, of obvious rulers. and He didn't come in pageantry other than the star. So it, it didn't look like much. It was a blue-collar family, normal everyday people, Nazareth. Oftentimes, the wrapping looks different than what's inside. When I saw this package that after it was wrapped last night, I said, man, that's perfect. That's perfect because that's ugly. That is a bad wrapping job. And I wasn't sure anybody would even want to choose it. Hoping they would, but I wasn't sure they would want to. Because oftentimes things don't appear. You say, okay, this is, this is God's will. Pastor Todd, go back to what you were saying. This is God's will, but it sure doesn't look or feel like it is. And I can tell you because I'm still walking through that. And I, you know, I had a, most of you know, I had a doctor's appointment this last week. It was nothing but bad news. So many prayers, so many prophecies. No, it hasn't gotten any better at all. I think we still need to do surgery. And I was messed up and frustrated. And I'm thinking, I've got to go all the way back to the beginning and start this whole process over with this ankle. So if any of you have a laser gun or we can fuse bones together, I'm available to be an experiment. So I'm still praying. I, I don't know what it looks like. And I don't know why it came in this package. It's like, okay, good. It's been nine weeks yesterday. Okay. I think I've learned a few things. Well, obviously, there's more to learn. And, and I don't understand. I don't understand the packaging. You say this, you know, and, and at this point, I'm still at the point where I'm kind of frustrated now when people say, well, you know, it's up, leave it up to God. He knows what he's doing. Does he? Which day? Obviously, it wasn't Wednesday when I went to the doctor. That's kind of how you feel. And, and I know we can all relate, maybe not with something like this, but something in your life. Okay, here's God, but the packaging is not what you were hoping for. The wrapping is not what you, what you thought was going to be the thing. It's like, God, you called me to this, and this is what it looks like? You called me to all of this, you've led me through this maze, and this is where I am? I have followed you a year, five years, ten years, thirty years, more, and 
this is where we are? This is where you've led me? I've sacrificed, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about us, you. I've sacrificed this, this, and this, and, and I've tried to follow your, your word, and far from perfect, but continue to try and strive. And this is, you know, this is, this is the gift. This is the return. And you have to know Jesus' whole life That's what people said about him. Even when he had the disciples and he was doing things like this, this guy from Nazareth, we know his family. He's not much. Yeah, but he healed somebody. Eh, Anybody can heal. You know, and you might say that, but at that point, uh, false teachers and uh, impersonators of, of of miracles of God were, were very, very normal. Very normal, even more than they are now. So miracles were not necessarily the defining thing. That was one thing. You say, okay, well, I want the gift, but I don't know about the package. And I can tell you that is the peril of our journey in this room or beyond, that's the peril of your journey. I want this road. I want this journey. I want this relationship, but I'm not sure about the packaging. I'm not sure about the gift. I'm not sure about the presentation. And then when something goes really wrong and you're really disappointed and you really, I don't feel like God fails me, failed me in any way. I don't want to give that off. I don't. Because, like I said last week, I can never ask for anything else from God and expect Him you know, to give it to me out of debt because he, I owe Him, He owes me nothing. So, literally, that's, that's, a premise that, that's a premise that I know it's locked in, I don't forget. But the layers of icing on that cake sometimes get frustrating. And so, you know, the cake itself, we know. But the icing can be a mess. And that's, that's the journey. That's your journey. That's your choice. God, I, I want to follow you. I'm trying. But for some reason, every time I look at this cake, it's been iced wrong or it's the wrong color or flavor. And you know, we went and picked up a birthday cake for somebody recently, and we ordered it and went and picked it up. And, of course, you pick it up in sheer brilliance. You pick it up on the day of the event. So if something's wrong, you can't change anything. So we picked it up, and it was not what we ordered. It's like, this? This is an embarrassment. We ordered this cake. It's supposed to be this. It's supposed to have this. They told us it would have this. It didn't have any of that. And at that point, that's the cake. I was like, okay, that's it. This is not the icing or the... The garnishing on top that we asked for, but that's what we got. God, we need you today. Today, right now, we prayed, God, we need you to heal. Restore people's lives. And there are situations that some of you are dealing with that are heavy, 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 heavy. Makes what I'm dealing with look minuscule. And I get that. You're dealing with heavy stuff. Eternal stuff. Life or death stuff. Tragedy. Some of you prayed for that, for yourself or somebody else today, and, and by this afternoon or tomorrow, there very well could be a layer of icing that you didn't ask for. I'm almost afraid to pay, pray for people right now who are sick, because it seems that when I pray for them, they get worse. But I'm going to keep praying anyway, because God is the same, and He's the healer. But it's, it's that, that packaging that we struggle with. God, I've made my choice. You know where my faith stands. But so much of this is not what I'm in it for, is not what I expected, is not what I thought. I thought I would have better this or that or more of this or different this, and my life would be this, and it's not that. And I still feel like you want my life to be that, 
But at this point, it's only a small portion of that. And I can't see any hope. You know, I, for me, I'm a light at the end of the tunnel guy. Give me a light at the end of the tunnel, and I can get through anything. But I need some light. When I stare down the dark tunnel, oh, this will be great. I'm lying. I'm lying. Because I need a little bit. I need a little ray of light at the end of the tunnel. I do. I need that. And usually God gives me that, but sometimes he doesn't. And it's really tough for you or me when you have to walk through that tunnel and excavate your way through, and there are no rays of light shining anywhere. God, I know you have chosen me and appointed me to walk down this road, but I can't see anything. That's when blind faith comes into play. And at those points, unfortunately, we find out who we really are. Because when it really gets tough, and when there's no ray of light, there's no prophetic word, God's not giving you Scripture. I love when God leads me to Scripture, and it speaks to exactly what I'm going through. What I don't love is when I'm looking for that, and it doesn't happen. Okay, God, I need you to speak to me. I need you to speak to me. I I really need you to speak to me. I know this is cheap, God, but I need you to speak to me. I need you to speak to me. I need you to speak to me. In addition, there was Hillel, Bethzer, Gador, Merith, Behath, Eccleton, six towns where they're surrounding villages. Maybe the next verse. In addition, there were Hillel, Beth, I just said that, Kareth, Baal, uh, Reba, two towns surrounding their villages. In the wilderness, there were towns of Beth, Areba, Midden, Saka, Nibsum, the city of Salt, oh good, and En Gedi, six towns with their own surroundings. So right now we've got 12 towns and a few villages. But the tribe of Judah could not drive out the Jebusites who lived in the city of Jerusalem. So the Jebusites lived there among the people of Judah to this day, to the glory of God. That gained me nothing. God, I need you to speak to me. And he says, nothing. Have you ever been there? You listen to music? Nothing. You open your Bible, nothing. You go to your famous Bible app for the scripture of the day. And Jesus poured his blood out and they drank of it as to remember him. What? Nothing. You text somebody who's much more spiritual than you, hoping they'll give you a word. They don't even text you back. <laughs> nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. That's what that all means to me. So you get the picture. It's dark. You know you're appointed to walk. And there's no light. And there's no hope. In your perception. All I can say today, with the packaging, the gifts, it doesn't always look like what it is. Let's take a quick poll. How many of you, seriously, in the last two years, you saw nothing, there was no ray of light, maybe you didn't even feel anything, but you just kept walking down the path God told you to walk down and it all changed. Stand right where you are. If that's you, if that is you, literally if that's you, the last couple of years that's been what you've gone through that. Stand right where you are. Look around. Let these be testimonies to you that God is able to lead you even through the darkest of times, the darkest of tunnels, the place where you don't have answers. My friend Ben is here today. He's gone through it physically in the last year, and he didn't even know if he would ever walk again. But you stand here today as God has given you healing through doctors and other means, but he's given you healing, and we we love that, and we uh, we give praise for that. I know some of your stories, pieces of them, 
And I know there are some of you, thank you for standing, you may be seated. Let this be a testimony to you, because some of you were in a place of complete hopelessness, and you just kept walking. You didn't say, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to quit walking, and I don't care what happens, because bad will happen when you do that. You kept walking. And when we keep walking in the dark, we have to keep trusting that we're going the right direction. And it's never going to be easy. It's never been easy. The packaging is never as beautiful as we want it to be. But what God has for us is typically better than what we could have had. And I'm thankful for that. As I've lived that and you've lived that. If you've followed Christ for any amount of time, you've lived that. I've talked long enough. I don't really have a formal way to end this, but I'm going to ask you to stand with me. We're going to pray. I want to lead you in a prayer, and then we're going to pray. Remember the, uh, just remember the, the visuals from today. It won't always look like the best thing, but God knows what's best for you. And I know if you continue to follow him, that will be best for you. All of us. All of us. If you are not a follower of Christ today, you say, well, I don't, you know, I believe, but I haven't really received that into my life, or I'm not even sure I believe. Try it. Try it. If we believe and receive, we believe and we confess with our mouth, we receive that into our life. We believe Jesus is who he said, the word became flesh. We believe the word is who he said he was, who the word of God says the word is. We believe that. And we confess that. So we believe and receive. We believe and receive it. When we do that, we have that gift of being reborn, that gift of new life. So maybe you need to do that today. Maybe you need to say, okay, I receive that gift, the gift of the word, the gift of Jesus Christ as the connection between God and me. I receive that in my life. You're in the room or you're watching or listening elsewhere. Just pray this simple prayer with me. If you uh, need to establish or reestablish relationship with God today, personally, pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I look to you for life. And I pray that you will give me that life, that new life in Christ. I ask you to forgive my sins, change my heart, my mind, my direction. I choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ, the Word, today. Give me the strength I need and the determination even to walk in the darkness. Increase my faith, God. In Jesus' name, amen. God, I pray that you would seal this in people's hearts and the ones today who are struggling, and it's not at all what they thought they were getting. It's not at all what they thought they were living. It's not what they thought they were committing to. God, I pray that you would give them just a little ray of light in that dark tunnel. Even if it's a a lightning bug that says, hey, you're still on the right path. Give us a little ray of light that says, I've got you. I've got you. You're covered, and I've got you. We thank you for leading us, God. And we thank you for being uh, the word that comes to us and the word that lives within us, and the word that has changed our hearts and lives. We commit ourselves to you, and I ask you to uh, go with your people from wherever they are, this place or where they might be watching or listening. Keep us safe. Allow us to live that blessed life and to be thankful for all good things, every good thing, the breath that's in us, the feet that are beneath us, the hands that we have, the smile that we're able to give, God, I pray that we would be thankful for everything and we would give praise to you for that. So we commit ourselves to you in the cause of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. It's so great to see you today. Uh, won't see you till, uh, I won't see you till New Year's, but go into the New Year safe. Uh, be very safe. Be cautious. Be wise. Uh, live with, uh, with God as your inspiration and your light. Be blessed.